Do people only like you because you're emotionally available or because you're fat? No, 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 no. I was on Facebook the other day, like we all were. I wasn't at work, if that makes any difference. Anyway, I'm more of an Instagram fan. I've moved a lot more that direction. But anyway, that's beside the point. So, I was on Facebook the other day, and I was looking at one of the people that I follow. Her name is Jess Baker, uh, or otherwise known as the blogger, The Militant Baker, who is super cool and edgy, and I kind of want to be like her a little bit, because uh, she's kind of like this no hold barred, you know, take me as I am kind of person, which I love. So check her out, The Militant Baker, so that you can kind of educate yourself on, uh, you know, how you can be cooler. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. She posts on Facebook, uh, a weekly advice column from another gal. Uh, and I'm not really sure if it's Virgie or Virgie, but the advice column is called Dear Virgie or Virgie, whatever it is. Um, but one of her readers uh, wrote to her asking for advice. What this reader was asking about was she felt that she was kind of carrying an emotional workload. Uh, you know, there was, there was herself and then a colleague who was kind of in the same position, um, kind of had the similar backgrounds from what it sounds like. I, I, let's read it real quick. She wrote, I have noticed at my job that a lot of people come to me when they need support. I didn't really notice it until the other day when I started talking to a coworker about it. She's probably medium, maybe a size 10 or 12. I am fat. She and I roughly hold the same position in the company. I am not anyone's supervisor. She was surprised to hear about our colleague's behavior. Uh, she said, no one had ever approached her to talk about things people talked to, uh, to this gal about. Uh, when I got home that night, she realized that she was actually kind of hurt and pissed off about it. So she wrote um, this advice column, kind of asking for what she should do. So, the advice column goes on to kind of explain a couple of things that I'm going to get into that. Um, what she came back with was that this girl at work was experiencing some sort of microaggression. Uh, and if you don't know what a microaggression is, she details it out for you, uh, which is everyday verbal, nonverbal, uh, and environmental slights, snubs, or insults. Uh, whether intentional or unintentional, which communicate hostile, derogatory, or negative messages to target persons based solely upon their marginalized group membership. So in layman's terms, it's this gal's fat and this writer feels that since she is fat, she's experiencing low man on the totem pole in terms of She's fat, so I can go talk to her because it'll make me feel better about my emotional because she's got her own issues going on. At least that's where I'm getting it, me being the reader. She then goes on uh, to write about how this girl is being microaggressed and has kind of a lower position in society based on her physical appearance. So, not to be blunt about it, but I call bullshit. Um, for those who know me, I'm not really a person who likes to cuss, but come on, people. First off, we're not getting the full story here. So, this gal, who is a plus-size gal, and then she has her colleague, which is a 10 to 12, which still technically is considered plus-size, if you want to go into that realm. Nonetheless, um, she didn't give all the information needed to formulate an educated opinion. So this advice columnist kind of went on to, to say that she was being microaggressed and that, you know, she had this kind of lower than persona at work simply because of her appearance, her size. In fact, that's actually where it goes to. She was being for lack of a better word, used as an emotional punching bag 
by these people seeking emo emotional help because they feel that this person is not going to give them any backlash or if some of this emotional stuff did come out in the world uh, she could easily be brushed aside like oh no I didn't say that to her and everybody's gonna not believe this plus size gal because she is plus size which that's complete crap man in order to f in order to fully have an engaged conversation we need to know a lot of stuff instead of irresponsibly throwing out what we consider microaggression. So, me, I am 34 years old, I'm a man, and I'm, I'm relatively thinner. For all intents and purposes, nobody should talk to me about emotional anything because I don't give off that look. With that said, I give off that persona. I work with quite a few women. In fact, I'm literally one of the only men in my office. Um, everybody comes to me for problems and emotional support. And it's not because I'm fat or thin. It's not because I'm a man or a woman. It's because I have made myself emotionally available. I choose to give off the persona of I'm here, I care for you, I want your feedback, even if I don't. So when I first was hired at this place, I walked in, I had this very fun, bubbly, like tackle the world persona. Um, even when I don't feel like working, I still keep that persona up. And it invited people to want to be friendly with me. Not friends, but friendly. And then from there, it progressed into them wanting to talk about some of their personal issues. That's something that I invited because it was the way that I held myself. So, for all intents and purposes, if we were to go with what this weekly advice columnist was saying, Nobody should be wanting to talk to me. They should be wanting to go to the plus size girl who is marginalized and lower than and not considered part of anything. We don't have that. You know, in fact, the, the plus size girl who works for us is, doesn't really get talked to much. Um, she just, she just does her job. She's, she's there, she, and that's the way she's crafted her persona. She's a, a hard-nosed, get it done, I'm here to do my work and I'm here to, you know, leave when the day is over, which is cool. And that's the way that she's chosen, but that's, that's the persona that she has portrayed in the workplace. So, if we were to go with the advice columnist idea, which is fat people, get emotionally, you know, beat up from everybody else's problems, then it probably should apply to my world, right? It doesn't. So, I've got to say, this advice columnist was irresponsible. She's using terrible buzzwords like microaggression to make this person feel victimized. When in reality, if we could all be a fly on the, world, on the wall, it would be interesting to see how she portrays herself in her workplace. Is she happy and bubbly? Does she invite people to talk about their emotional baggage? Um, and if she doesn't like it, why didn't she say something? And then the other girl, her, her size 10 to size 12 colleague, who's roughly in the same position, who is thinner than she is, maybe she's a real bitch and nobody wants to talk to her. Maybe they go to this gal because she's open and she wants to talk. A, a good study, this, this larger gal, try being a bitch for a week. See if, <laughs> see if uh, you know, the, the size 10 to size 12 starts to, to pick up all the emotional baggage that you don't wanna deal with. The point is, is that for us to be throwing out, you know, these 
terms of microaggression and slights and automatically assuming that this person is viewed as a lower self than her colleagues is irresponsible. It breeds this weird kind of entitled, fear-mongering response that can actually be hurtful to this person. You know, um, in this column she goes on to say something to the effect of, take this emotional uh, power that you've been giving everybody back on yourself and focus that into raising yourself up in the workplace. What if that's one of the things that people love most about her, including her supervisors? What if one of the things that this gal does so well is what is going to raise her up in this company? Maybe it doesn't. Who knows? Nobody knows. But those are questions that need to be asked before you start throwing out terms like aggression or giving this lady this appearance of maybe she's maybe she is viewed at as lower than all of her colleagues at work because quite frankly you don't know and when you start throwing out these kind of terms you give the wrong kind of impression and so here's my challenge to you friend who wrote this advice columnist ask your friends go to them first or your colleagues say you know what I notice you've been coming to me a lot for your problems why what is it that makes me you know emotionally open to you they'll tell you they'll be like oh well you've always given me great advice or I respect you I've noticed the way that you do things in the workplace and I think that you are intelligent and you can help me not microaggressed. What's the matter with you? It's terrible. It's terrible. Get all the information before you spread fear mongering. So the militant baker has a large following and she shared this and, and quite frankly, I mean, I do love Jess, but I wish she hadn't have shared this because you have now spread this message of microaggression to thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people who are going to sit back in their chair and go, well, maybe I'm microaggressed. When the truth is, there's probably more to the story. And if you take a second to just talk to the people who are talking to you to find out why they're coming to you, you might just find out the real answer, which is they really like you and they feel comfortable with you, not because you're fat, but because you're a good person. Um, and that's my life. That's why people come and talk to me. Not because I'm a boy or a girl, not because I'm fat or I'm thin. It's because I'm a likable person. And I'm more than happy to help you with your issues, whether it is personal or work-related. Um, and, and in that way, you know, it, it, I guess I just, I wish people would stop doing this kind of stuff because you've now spread, you've spread, I keep saying fear. Fear isn't the right word, but in the end, it will cause fear because you didn't know the whole story. It'll cause people to act rashly because they feel like they're being micro-aggressed. So, in the future, advice columnist, I would suggest getting more details before writing your column. Because um, what you turned out as kind of like a size-shaming Poor column that spread microaggression could have been something very positive. It could have been something that said, you know what? These people are probably coming to you for X reason. Should you have done your research, you might have been able to write something really great for this person that uplifted them. Or, or you might have validated what this person had to say, you know? <laughs> 
maybe she maybe she is being microaggressed, but I don't think so. Not from the way that she's writing. Not from that little blurb. You don't have enough information to be able to make those kind of assumptions. And now that a lot of people have read this, my fear is, is that they're going to dehumanize who they should be because they think they're being fat shamed. So with that said, I'm going to wrap it up. Um, I realize that once again, I'm a dude. I'm sitting here. I'm relatively thinner, but I do know what I'm talking about. If you go watch my other videos, you'll see that my beautiful, lovely, gorgeous wife is a plus size girl. Um, quite frankly, people come to me more than they go to her, <laughs> but that's because she is awesome and tells it like it is, whereas I'm a little bit more candy coated. Uh, so, you know, I know what I'm talking about. Go look at my videos. If you like what I'm doing here, go back and look, see, you know, see all the fun stuff that we do. I'll tag it here, here, wherever the big eye pops up at. Go look, see what I'm all about. Um, Cause I'm not about spreading fear or microaggression. I'm about loving who you are, whether you're big or small or tall or whatever. And, uh, and moving forward that and being comfortable. So, uh, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, please. Uh, I'm Tony or otherwise known as Choney Pants. One day I will, <laughs> I'll explain that and I'll see you again. Have a good day and love each other. And thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe.